Morning everyone, so last Sunday of the month again, um, don't really know where that's gone, seemed to be a whirlwind but I'll be glad to get into spring, bit of the warm weather coming, definitely gives you a spring in your step. Um, this month's been a really good one for the team, uh, two new members which is great, so a big shout out to Tame and Alex, you're doing a really good job, glad to have you on board. Um, had a bit of a rocky start to the month. Um, one of the guys damaged the van, um, which was always a frustration. But the thing is, I, I know he's certainly not done it on purpose. So people said to me, oh, why, why are you staying so calm about it? Why have you not made it a big, big deal? And I just don't see the point. The lad's obviously going to be feeling crap about it. Um, he's okay, which is what's most important. The van can be repaired. What I was most pleased about is he had the integrity to come and tell me straight away and said, look, held his hands up and said, oh, I've, I've damaged the van. Um, and like I say to customers, things happen in life. Nothing's perfect. We make mistakes as a company and as a team, but what, what makes or defines you as a person and as a company is how you go about remedying that and he's gone the right way about it so I'm really impressed with that and I'm really impressed with Matty so big shout out to Matty too. This week um, or this month should I say we've got um, a couple of little bits of fault finding electrical fault finding which I thought would be a bit different for you we've got um, how to test and fault find on a element on a, a cylinder so that's going to be interesting We've also got the installation of a Hive dual channel thermostat and how to wire that to an S plan, which can always seem daunting, but when you break it down, it's a real simple process. So I thought that would be good for you. And then on another job, which we've just recently started, we've got a conversion of a boiler from Gravitator, Combe, and a bathroom renovation, um, some building works going on, plastering, electrical, really good job. A few bits going off, so I'll give you a little bit of a brief overview of that. Well, I hope you all enjoy it. Thank you very, very much for watching our channel. If you like our content, please subscribe and like. It really helps with the algorithms and helps gain us traction, so I'm really grateful for that. And of course, if there's anything you'd like to see, um, We'll be more than willing to try and do it for you. So hope you all have a good March and hope you've had a good February. Take care, everyone. So back at the grind, Monday morning, and Mate has just come and showed me this corker lock. Look at this. Mate, what you done? <laughs> if your boiler has failed, or one of your zone valve has failed and you need to get hot water you can use your backup immersion if you have a hot water cylinder and this can be on an unvented or open vented cylinder and the first thing you need to do is to go and check your immersion is to make sure that you've got power to it if you've got power to your immersion and you've got 240 volts coming into the immersion, then you can isolate the spur. And what you can do is you can just check to see whether this little overheat button has popped. And if you press it back down, this can sometimes allow your element to start working again. Sometimes they're on top here somewhere as well. But if it keeps happening, then you've got a bigger problem and you need to investigate it further. The other thing you can do is to check continuity through your element. And then you can check the integrity of it on these two pins here. And all this is, is a continuous circuit all the way down. So you want to be checking on ohms reading resistance for continuity between these two pins. And you should be looking for a resistance reading of around 20 ohms, but anywhere between 15 and 25 is suitable. 
So as you can see, I've got my probes set on the element. And what we're doing now is just checking the integrity for a reading. And we're looking, like I said, for around 20 ohms. Now, if you get an open line or it's bouncing about all over, then you know that your element has failed and that'll be a replacement element completely. You'll have to drain down and take it out. So a little test you can do with thermostats is, is just to turn it down and then open and you should hear a click. Because basically in a thermostat, there's just an open and close on these elements. So when it clicks down and it's open, it's satisfied. So then there's no need for it to stay closed to allow it to flow through. And then when you want to go to a temperature that's higher, you'll hear it click and then that will allow it to go through. In this case, where you can not hear a click, what's happened is it's welded itself shut. And that's where you'll find that the overheat button will trip, which is why we found on this one. And there was a leak on it, which you could see from the previous video. And the quick way to test this is, is to get your probes and test. And you can hear that it's a constant resistance. So there's a circuit all the way around. And that's what's happened. Thermostat has welded itself shut. So the element was fine, but it was the element had le started to leak on the cylinder, which you needed to replace in. And also the thermostat has welded itself shut on this one, which is why the overheat had tripped. Hope that's to use to some of you guys out there and girls in the field. One of our team have got to install a Hive dual channel thermostat onto an S plan um, this week coming up. So what I thought I would do is I thought I'd show you how easy it is to do the wiring for this. There's just a couple of connections that you need to change. And once you've worked out which are which, it's going to be a simple process for you. So I'm going to go and show you on our rig how we do this and how easy it is for everybody in the field. Okay, so here we are. So here's our S plan. Got our spur, got our wiring center, got our programmer, central heating thermostat, cylinder thermostat, two zone valves, pump and boiler. So at the minute, we've got it off. So there's nothing on. So there's nothing calling. So if for argument's sake, we put our central heating on, nothing's happening. Nothing's coming on, even though we've got it on the programmer. And that's because the thermostat's satisfied. But if we turn the thermostat over, we should then see things start to take place. There we go. And as you can see, we know that the zone valve is open because it's loose. So thermostat satisfied. You hear the click, which is always a good sign. We know that's working. So let's test hot water. Put it on at the programmer. Make sure the cylinder stat is not satisfied. And there we go, pumps running, boilers on. Zone valves open. So because the cylinder stat's not satisfied because it needs to get to temperature, it's staying on. So we're gonna turn this off for now. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you how to work out which is which on the cables. So what you need to do is, you basically need to get rid of your thermostat because the new thermostat is done through RF with the receiver, okay? So we re all we need to do is work out at the wiring center, which is the live 
comment and which is your switch live. So what we need to do is, because at the minute we've got power going to the programmer, because the programmer is on for heating, but because the stats not calling, the switch live is not taking place. So we put it onto the neutral and we find out, trace the thermostat cables back, which are there, trace it, trace it, trace it. And then you can see we've got a neutral, which goes to the neutral. And then we've got two cables. We've got a common and we've got our switch. So now, because the programmer is sending power to the thermostat, on the common, we'll have two 40 volts, as you can see there. And we know that brown is a common. But on the switch, which is that one, we've got not two 40 volts. But if, just have to bear with me, turn my thermostat up, so it's calling, then what we'll get is, we'll get 240 volts on the switch live. So now we've identified which is the switch live and which is the common at the wiring center. We we'll turn that back down again. So the switch live's not taking place. We've got no voltage. Pump and boiler's gone off. So, so we send the programmer live, which is going into our common to the brown on the zone valve. So once we've done them connections, we can then remove our programmer. We put our receiver where our programmer is. Now, if they've got a standard British backplate, that makes that nice and simple. And then our thermostat has been completely removed. So I'm gonna do all these connections now and then I'll show you the hive operating. As you can see, I've removed the old programmer. We now have the receiver in its place because it's on a standard British back plate. The thermostat is removed because we've got a hive which is linked to our receiver through RF and the connections in the wiring center have been altered where the call from the programmer goes to the bran on the zone valve. And I'm now I'm gonna show you how this is all operational. So at the minute, we've got hot water on, and that's why there's a green light on the receiver. But because the cylinder stat is satisfied, it's not opening the zone valve. So when there's a call from the cylinder stat, because the temperature in the cylinder has dropped below what we need it to be, the hot water zone valve has now come loose, the pumps come on and the boiler's fired. If we then get the cylinder stat satisfied, just turn it down for testing purposes. Zone valve closes, pump stops running, boilers stopped. And then for central heating, because the target temperature is below the actual temperature, the central heating's not coming on. But if we put the target temperature above the actual temperature, the thermostat should send a signal to the receiver, we can see that our lights come on, it's illuminated, our central heating zone valve has become loose, the flow of water is going through, the pump's gone and the boiler's running. And there we can see that now our hive dual channel receiver and thermostat is wired up to our S plan. So it's that simple. You don't have to make any major alterations in your wiring center, apart from removing the thermostat and sending the call from the programmer to the brand of your zone valve. And that is it.
really hope that helps somebody out in the field. So we've got a bit more going off on this job. Um, what we've done is we've took out that internal wall to open up a kitchen diner for the client and we've put some double doors on there. Still needs to be made good and plastered. Um, we are doing a conversion from a gravity system to a combi boiler. So we're putting a new gas run in. So we're gonna bring the gas run over in that corner there um, and externally up and through the soffit outside. So that's where the gas run is gonna go. What we're gonna do is we're gonna core through just down here, run it up through the soffit up there and then into the loft space because that's where the boiler's going to be sited. Also as well we've relocated this door, it was originally here but the customer didn't want it to go in the kitchen so we've relocated it over to here which is going to be their new entrance hallway, all this floor it's going to be tiled at some point. Um, so go to the airing cupboard so this is the old open vented system i know sometimes when you come in these cupboards and you're looking at the pipe work it can be quite daunting but easiest way i do it just to break things down through heating and hot water separately. So you can work out which is your flow and return very, very easy. So your flow will always come into your pump because then it pumps it around the system. And then these ones here, this is your vent and then this is your feed. So your vent and feed need to be within 150 mil of each other um, and it's this is that's for it to be a neutral point so it's if I always remember it is OCP so open vent cold feed pump and this being in this configuration prevents the pump drawing air in from the open vent it would take it through the um, header tank if you like and then it comes round to your three port and it's just got three ports obviously and then you've got your hot water port and you've got your heating and that's A and B and the way I remember it is always B for bath and then A for heating and then what we've got here is we've got our primary flow because you can see where it goes down and then we've got our return I always label these pipes up so it's just easy when we've ripped everything out we know what's what and then there's no chance of getting confused. And as you return, it's returning up from your heating system. You can also see that it's returning from your cylinder and then it goes back up, up and back and returns to your boiler. Soil pipes here. So you've got your condense into it, but we're gonna reroute that in the loft space there. And as you can see here, we've got the open vent and cold feed which go up to the header tank which we're going to get rid of and then we've got the cold feed here cold main which will be feeding the header tank and cold water storage system so that's all heating done nice and easy you've got your cold feed to your cylinder which will be coming from your cold water storage tank which we can get rid of and um, we can get rid of the open vent for the hot water cylinder so then all we need to do is tee um, the hot into the hot on the hot water cylinder once the cylinder's out take that up into the loft and connect that to the boiler so that'll be hot feed for the boiler up there cold feed which we just said is just round here for the boiler and then what we'll do is these primary flow and return we're going to take up into the loft space and connect up there. So we've got 
our primary flow and return will have our hot and cold and then the gas is being run from outside so all that is going to be all the pipe work will be in there nice and simple so just go up into the loft space so under new gas regs you have to have a loft ladder um, needs to be boarded out and we need a light up here which spark is coming to do um, but this is where our new boiler is going to be sited um, and then we'll get rid of the header tank cold water storage tank get rid of this flue and then we'll just need to get the new flue terminated outside somewhere but a bit going off on this job a um, bit more to do which makes it all interesting. Got Matt and Tom on this one, so we want a quick turnaround for the customer, um, but we'll keep you updated, thanks. So, boiler's all piped up now, almost. Just gotta do the soldering, but we've got it all ready. Just waiting to get our connections. Matt is gonna bring them all up over there. So we've got flow, hot, cold, a return to collecting. Tom's done gas run down into there. So So where we drill out for the basin and the tap, we like to silicone on the inside of the holes. Just to ensure that if any water does ever get down there, it's not gonna to lead to the unit swelling. It's just another thing we do to future proof our bathrooms.